Thank you for being with us for Sunday School today. Is it Sunday or have you chosen to join us on a different day? And I wonder, are you by yourself or are you with other people? If you're with other people, do something to thank them for being here with you. If you're by yourself, give yourself a hug. I'm so glad that you're here today. Let's begin with a prayer, and you can pray this time with your eyes open, because our lesson today, we're going to be talking about all the plants and the animals and all the different things that are in creation, and so I think it makes sense to keep our eyes open as we are praying for them. Let us pray. Dear God, as we listen and learn today, help us to figure out what we can do to take care of your creation, your world and your people, your animals and your plants, everything in it. Help us to find our part to do. And all of God's people said, amen. Today and for the next few weeks, we will be learning about stewardship. And I wrote that on the board there. So we're gonna be talking about stewardship and stewardship is a big word that means to care for something or to manage something. Sometimes stewardship is about money and managing it so that there is a balance between saving and spending and sharing. However, stewardship is also about so much more than money. Stewardship is about taking care of things, the earth and the animals and plants, the air and the people around us. A person who takes care of things is called a steward. We want to be good stewards and take good care of things. We don't want to destroy them or damage them. There's a story in the Bible, in the Old Testament. We can find it in the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. And you probably know the story of creation, when God separated the waters from the skies and the light from the dark and made trees and birds and sea creatures and animals and people. And then toward the end of the story, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, And then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and let them have dominion over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now there are a lot of important things in that small scripture. Whose image are people made in? What did it say? We are made in God's image. And the people are given dominion over the fish and birds and all the wild animals. Dominion means that the people are given power over those animals and responsibility for them. The people were created so that they could care for the animals. A little later in Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29, humans are also given the plants for food with the expectation that they will take care of the plants as well. God did not make us owners of his creation. He made us managers or stewards of his creation. Now, what's the difference between an owner and a manager? If we own creation, we can do whatever we want for our own purposes. If we manage creation, we do what God wants with it for God's purposes. God intended for us to be good managers of God's creation. And now you get to do some wondering and then a project with Nancy. It's been good to see you. Hello, everyone. There's a saying when you're hiking to take photographs and leave only footprints. This helps remind us to be good stewards of the environment. We don't want to tear up the plants or leave litter. I wonder what are other ways that you could be a good steward of the environment and take care of it. In the New Testament, in the Bible, there's another scripture that relates to stewardship. It is in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 
Be generous with the gifts God has given you. Manage them wisely to help others. Besides stewardship of the earth, taking care of the earth and the plants and animals and people on it, there's also stewardship of things we have. Each, we each have things like toys and books and money and food. We also have personal gifts and talents. Some of us are good at music or sports, or cooking, or being friends, or listening. I wonder how many things you can name or list that you take care of. If you need to, you can ask someone to help you make a list of both things you have and things you can do. I wonder, have you ever heard about stewardship in the church? Think about a time in church when we focus on giving to others. We can be giving money or our talents or our prayers. Can you think of when we practice stewardship in the church? There's a short video about Heifer International and what they do to manage and care for people and animals. A heifer is a cow, but Heifer International uses all types of animals to help people have enough healthy food to eat and take care of the earth. Check out this movie from Heifer International. This is Alton Brown for Heifer International. And uh, I used to have a goat. All right, maybe it wasn't a goat. Maybe it was a, a cow or a water buffalo or a sheep or a llama or trees or chickens or even bees. In which case, a leash would seem perhaps odd. Okay, my goat's not really missing. It went to a family somewhere in the world or even here at home. It went to people who really needed it. But why a goat, you might ask, or a cow or a water buffalo or bees? Why not send tractors if you want to help? Well, first, because in most of the uh, places of the world where Heifer works, the nearest gas station is a very long way off. And gas probably costs about a thousand dollars a liter. As for a mechanic, well, that's like in the next country. And let's face it, an animal has a much better engine, one that can move people's lives. You turn it on, it gives you milk or, or wool or eggs. It plows fields, it produces, how can I say this politely, um, fertilizer that makes crops grow. It's like giving someone a small business because all of those products, the milk, the wool, the eggs, turn into income uh, for medicine, school, clothing, a better home, a sustainable livelihood. And the animals produce livestock because, you know, uh, animals make baby animals. That's what they do. Try that with a tractor sometime. Anyway, the next thing you know, uh, the family is passing on the gift, sharing the animal's offspring and the training that came with it with another family who does the same thing. And so does the next family and the next until pretty soon you've helped to lift a whole community out of poverty. Cool, huh? You see, Heifer International isn't just about animals and training. It's about the amazing things that happen when people realize they can stand strong all on their own, like the resourcefulness and skills they discover, the, uh, the communities that grow, the attitudes that change. It's amazing. Suddenly, hope happens, and it's like somebody turned on a switch. And you know what else is amazing? It's the power you have to make the lasting change happen all over the world every day. That's where my goat went, and that's what you start with one gift to Heifer International, a gift that grows, and maybe the best, hardest working gift you'll ever give. And that, my friends, is a recipe for lasting change. I love how the gift of an animal gives milk or eggs, and it gets passed along to another family so they can be helped too. Some of the animals produce food that the family can eat themselves, like milk and eggs or honey. Often they have enough that they can sell it to others at a market. And then the family can make use the money to send their children to school or build a house so they're safe from rain and wind. If you'd like to take care of a family and practice good stewardship of your money, by donating an animal through Heifer International, 
you can go to their website at heifer.org. It's been good to be with you today. Thank you for spending time with us this week. See what you can do to be a good steward, to take care of the world around you. You can share your money, your talents, your time, and I know the world will be a better place because you care. Have a great week.